How many of you have some pretty well made up minds about how things are out there and how they should be, must be, got to be, and ought to be? And every time we're doing that, this is something that we could learn from him because that's a clear invitation to experience the grace of moving through life with an open mind and an open heart. Meister Eckhart revealed the essence of this process of awakening when he observed God is not found in the soul by adding anything, but by a process of subtraction. Consider it. You up for a little spiritual math here this morning for a while? The exercise promises to be tough, painful, and full of grace. Authentic spiritual inquiry provides a steady diet of what might be called bitter pills of truth. Swallowing them, as I'm sure you've noticed, is the absolute pits. But once digested, the nutrition is beyond compare. It'll put you in touch with the insight reflected in my all-time favorite bumper sticker, the truth shall set you free, but first it will piss you off. <laughs> have you ever been there? Yeah, we all have, for sure. Demonstrating the capacity to peacefully accommodate instances of non-compliance with our preferencing systems, those times when the old wine that we have drunk of, we are proclaiming it the best wine, and we're not ready to hear or to take on the incredible fragrance and the bouquet of a brand new vintage because it's strange and it's falling distinctly different on our ears. Demonstrating the capacity to peacefully accommodate instances of non-compliance with our preferencing systems, for instance, is sign and token to the world that we've been deeply involved in Eckhart's process of subtraction. It means we've begun to erase from our core beliefs the egoic fiction that contentment and satisfaction are possible only when everything's going my way. I love that song. That was from Oklahoma, wasn't it? Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I got a wonderful feeling, cause... Oh, fudge. <laughs> Darn. And isn't that the ultimate setup piece for suffering? It's absolutely inevitable if it's set on that. If that's the old wine that you've drunk, the wine that says, you'll feel fine and everything's wonderful when everything's going your way and you dedicate your life to that. It means we put to rest the popular notion that frustration and satisfaction depend entirely on our ability to dictate life's circumstances. As Eckhart encourages, subtracting that commonly held belief from our sense of how life is liberates us from the myth that the only way to alleviate frustration and achieve contentment is through change in the outer circumstances of our lives. That's the myth we've got to get rid of. That's the wine that we've drunk, the old wine that we have said is better. And it's not. It's not. It's not informed spiritually. Therefore, it's questionable. Eventually, letting go of all the spiritually uninformed thinking that turns the Garden of Eden into a rock and a hard place will let us see clearly the penetrating insight in the Third Zen Patriarch's observations that we've shared here so often. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. God, I was talking about that with somebody when I was down at conference, and they, they'd never heard it before. They said, boy, that really goes right for the throat, doesn't it? Yeah, you play around with that one for a while. And there's no escaping from it. That's true, the great way. The peace that Jesus is talking about, the grace of his way, is not difficult if you have no preferences. But the moment preferences enter into the dance, and bingo. And there you have it. Like it or not, it's the only formula there is for authentically contented lifestyle. Life minus conditionality equals contentment. The ever-changing flow of form and circumstance we call our lives, liberated from the bondage of unenlightened demands and expectations, 
faithfully yields a rich harvest of serenity and lighthearted joy. Experience Teilhard de Chardin called the most infallible sign of the presence of God, which is to say the presence of the divine attributes of peace and harmony and joy that flow from the human condition when it is attuned to the truth and set free from the tyranny of spiritually uninformed thinking. Ah, that's lovely. Hold that for a moment, that idea of Teilhard's. The most infallible sign of the presence of God is joy. Joy, yeah. But, and here's the rub, what exactly is this phenomena called spiritually uninformed thinking? And how do I know when I'm engaging in it? Answer the first question and you've solved the whole riddle. The best I'm seeing it at this point understands spiritually uninformed thinking as any cognitive process that separates us from our natural state of basic contentment. Every one of us is created in the image and likeness of peace and harmony. That's a divine inheritance we've all been blessed with by Father, Mother, God. Our natural capacity for peace and love and joy is an innate state of being that does not have to be learned. It is the eternal reality of our natures and the condition we manifest effortlessly and spontaneously in the absence of spiritually uninformed thinking. For a moment, imagine a quiet pond. If you just shut your eyes for a moment and, and imagine a quiet pond with a few lily pads floating on its still placid surface, not a breath of air is stirring, and the surface of the pond is free of, of even the tiniest suggestion of a ripple. You see it there? And then the sky darkens. Thunder clouds roll in, accompanied by heavy gusts of wind. Almost immediately, the quiet surface of the pond is transformed into an agitated scenario of choppy waves and wind-blown whitecaps. As you watch, the storm passes as quickly as it arrived. The sun emerges from the clouds and the winds subside to a whisper. As you watch the surface of the pond effortlessly and spontaneously returns to its original state, the natural state of placid serenity. You see it there? And that pond will remain calm and serene as long as it is not imposed upon by the wind's disturbing force. And likewise, each of us will return calm and serene as long as our inner sea of tranquility is not imposed upon by stormy gusts of spiritually uninformed thinking. And I've locked that one in, that idea. It may well be new wine, and it may be hard to digest and to appreciate the bouquet of, but take a sip of it and, and see if it doesn't make some sense. 